who watched over us last night, woke us up to bring us here on this new day, this first Sunday of the year. Praise God. Thank you. I'm going to start off this morning by reading a song. And it's one of my first, one of the first ones I learned when I was a little guy. And I first went to church. At least they like to read from Psalms. I'm going to be reading Psalms 1 to you. And the first Psalms in our Bible is, uh, and this is no, it's no relation to the ladies. It's simply that that was the first song that was written. And it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in, this, uh, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the land. It's in the law of the, it's in the, law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by, by a stream of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither, and all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the shaft that the wind drive it away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Nor the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. That's all six verses of the first song. I learned that when I first started going to Sunday school when I was a little guy. But as like I said, there's no reflection to your ladies because when it speak about God's people, God don't distinguish between sex. And neither do we. We talk about each other. So I just want to give praise and honor to this first Sunday of the new year, 2022. I remember when I was a little guy and I was back in, uh, but it's not about it's not about me, it's about us. We're here today to give honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved us, who went to the cross for us. So we're going to have an abbreviated sermon today. Um, sermon, not a sermon, see already, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> Maybe he has something good for me this year. I'm talking about sermons and so forth. God, God is good. God is good. And I just thank him for bringing me to this new year. And I know you thank him also because he let you see another year. So we just want to thank him for being so good. And uh, I don't know how you feel about this first Sunday, but somehow another, it's starting another year that I'm going to be uh, still in mourning. I lost my wife back in 2020. And uh, 2021 wasn't too good to me because I was in it by myself without my partner and I know about and I'm just talking to the well I'm talking to the congregation now because uh, the ladies you know that we can't do without you I came through a horrible year 2021 without my mate and I'm still grieving for her in 2002 when you love a woman or when you love anybody and you spend 54 years with them 54 beautiful and glorious years when they leave you and you have to carry on by yourself you have to look for somebody that's stronger than you and that's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so I've been on a, 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 a tell for the Lord the whole year 2021 and he brought me into 2022 and somehow or another even though it's the second day of the year I feel that he's going to keep me into 2023 Hallelujah. and if you feel that way just give a shout out to the Lord today hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, praise your God praise your we thank you hallelujah. this first Sunday of the new year you brought us here. You kept us all through 2021. You told us we'll see 2022. Now we're asking you to just watch over us in this late, in this year. So we just ask you to just watch over us. And I always told the Lord that I like to see a century. 
That means I want to live until I'm at least 100. And I remember the prophet in the Bible. I believe I forgot the king's name. Uh, I'm getting old, so I'm forgetting a lot of things. But I remember when he promised the Lord, asked the Lord for 15 years. The Lord gave him 15. And when the 15 was up, he turned to him again, went to the wall, turned to him again and said, Lord, can I have just a few more days? Could I have just a little bit more time? And you know what? God gave it to him. He's like that. So this year, let's make this, let's make this 2022 a praying year. Anything you want the Lord to do for you, get down on your knees and ask him. He'll do it. I'm making that creed today. And like I said, He's been good to me all through 2021. He brought me to 2022, and I already asked him for 2023. And if he sees fit not to let me see it, it'll be because, not because I didn't, I did anything wrong. It'll be because he want me to come home. So let's think about what we want to do this year. Think about all the good things that we want to accomplish this year. And we'll ask the Lord to just take care of us. And let, and let us see, let us be able to do what we want to do. I don't know about you, but uh, I just feel like uh, asking him for all the things that I think that I should be able to accomplish. So what about you? Are you in with the Lord this year, 2022? If you are, give out a shout out to our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Oh, I don't know about you, but uh, it's a heavy time for me. I know we're supposed to be going through our uh, yeah, that's another thing I have to work on. As you get older, I turn I turn uh, 79. Last year I'd be uh, 80. Oh wow! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> turned 79 last year. I'd be turning 80 this year. And I ask him to let me see 80. So sometime this year I'll be making 80. I'm not going to tell you what day it'll be. Yeah. But I came into 2022. Born 1942, so this would be my 80th. This would be my 80th year being on this earth. So I just thank the Lord and Savior for giving me this amount of time, and I ask Him for a century. So that means I got 20 more years to go, and I'd be blessing Him for all of those next 20 years that He allowed me to see. I don't know about you, but I, but He's been mighty good to me. I know we're supposed to be doing our. Uh, devotion of service well, and for, for some reason uh, the Lord is touching me and telling me to confess and do things that I want to do and I'm not gonna, and I'm going to be obedient but when the Lord touch you and want you to do something what do you do you do it somehow or another he's tell, telling me that there may be some grieving people around that need to hear a testimony this morning this is supposed to be our devotion of service for opening up our services this morning but somehow he's telling me that uh, there's things you have to say you have to enlighten somebody you have to let them know that uh, all you have to do is uh, believe and if you believe ask and he'll give it I asked him he let me see 80 this year 2022 I was born in 1942 so 2022 give me 80 asking for more and I asked him for 20 so that means I got 20 more years to go and when that time come I'll see what I'll be asking him for then so this would what this service would be today it would be a day of dedication to ourselves to ask the Lord to watch over us and grant every wish that we may ask him for this year so for he's granted minds I don't know about yours but he granted minds he allowed me to see 2022 He's going to let me, and I feel confident that he's going to let me see 2000, 
42. I'm asking him for that today. He's been so good to me. I don't know about you, but he's given me what I asked him for. Praise God. I'm not going to take up any more time because this is the first Sunday and there's a lot of things going in store today. I'm going to turn it over to the hands of the pulpit. But I just had to let you know that the Lord brought us over in town and brought us over in 2000. 2022, and I ask him now to let me see 80. This is my 80th birthday year. Praise God. I'm going to turn it over to the hands for the poor people. Amen. Let us stand. Our responsive reading is coming from the 100th Psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before the presence of his saints. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Be ye too great to enter in, and ye too poor to return. Give thanks to his name, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let us recite our mission and vision statement to introduce, present to all people Jesus Christ through our empowering ministries by equipping the membership through the effective teaching and preaching of the word to the glory of God. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just come to praise and thank your holy name this morning. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into a new year. Thank you, Lord, that you kept us, you kept our families. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being in this sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to listen to this service online. We pray, dear God, that you would just take charge of this service. We ask, Lord, first that you touch our pastor. Strengthen him that he may bring forth the word in power, Lord God. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would reign throughout this service. We give this service unto you, Lord. We cast aside everything that might interfere with us receiving the word today. We look unto the hills from whence cometh our help, Lord. We look for a word from you today, Lord. We thank you, dear God. We praise you, dear God. We ask you, Lord, to just take charge of this service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our hymn this morning, our congregational hymn, is lifting up. I believe it's hem 411 and the word should be coming up shortly.
morning. Happy New Year to everyone. Happy New 2022. Amen. The scripture reading will be found in the Gospel according to John. That's John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And also verse 14. And I'll be reading out the New International Version this morning. And it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Verse 14 says, The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Now our music ministry will come in place at this time. family. Happy New Year. Amen. If you were able to uh, sign on on watch tonight, you already heard a Happy New Year from me. Amen. Uh, but you get to hear it in person for those of you who are in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. We want to give our media team a moment to find us a song. Amen. Uh, but while we're doing that, we just want to encourage each and every one of you in the midst of this surge of the virus, we encourage you to be safe. Amen. And we will continue to be safe here uh, in our gathering. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, um, adhere to social distances, do your air hugs and your fist pumps and, and all of those things. Uh, because this strain is just more invasive than any of the other strains as it relates to symptoms. That more people are asymptomatic, meaning they don't show any symptoms at all, and they are carrying the virus. So we have to be careful, no matter how well you know a person, amen? They may not even know that they have the virus. So we have to be careful in the things that we do and how we conduct ourselves. But we still going to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. And I said, we still going to praise the Lord. Still going to give God glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Watch what you do and how you do it. You go to the grocery store. Make sure you wipe down that cart. Amen. Get your little pack of wipers because they run out. Amen. You got to have your own. If they don't have any, then don't touch the basket. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we've got to, I, I know we can laugh about it, but it is a serious matter. Amen. Uh, and um, the interesting point uh, about this one is, even though the infection rate is up, thank God the death rate is down. Amen. It's nowhere near what it was uh, when this pandemic first came out. And the scientists and all of the politicians ascribe that to the fact that we have gotten vaccinated amen, uh, and got the booster, amen, so now they are stressing vaccination, booster, and testing, amen, test, 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 amen, and while you're doing all of that, I start off with saying pray, amen, we've got to pray one for another, amen, uh, in the midst of this, and then be smart and take our precautions, we are grateful to God that he has allowed us to see a brand new year. 
amen, brand new possibilities and opportunities, amen. Oh, come on, can we give God a hand clap of praise for giving us another day, another privilege, another opportunity. We've closed the books on old stuff, amen. Let me say it again. We've closed the book on old stuff, amen. Yeah, it happened last year. Last year's gone, amen. And nothing we can do to change what has already happened, but we can learn from what has happened. Amen? Amen. To govern ourselves accordingly. If our music minister, our media ministry is ready, uh, we're gonna, they're going to come with a selection, and then we will come back uh, with the sermon topic and text for this morning. God bless you.
presence in our lives. God, we ask that you would have your way even now. We live a life of faith. Your word declares that our faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We ask even now, Lord God, that you would speak to us that we would glean a word from you for our hearts and from you for our minds. Lord God, we would not just be hearers Verse 14 of the text, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verse 14, according to the King James record, says to us, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of of grace and truth. I want to talk this morning on this first Sunday in the new year, in this season of epiphany or revelation, from the subject, Now Behold the Lamb. Now Behold the Lamb. The songwriter characterizes these words uh, in such pinpoint accuracy when she says, or when he says, now behold the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God, born into sin that I might live again, the precious Lamb of God. Beloved, every religion, religious group, has their manuscript or the Christian vernacular Bible. They have their holy manuscript which outlines the self-revelation of the deity that they call God. From the Buddhists, Hindus, Islam and Judaism and yes, even Christianity. For the Jews, the Talmud, for the Torah as we understand it, for Islam, the Holy Quran serves as the book that illustrates and depicts their God. For the Christians, we have in our version the 66 books that make up what we call the Holy Bible. And those of us who have taken the time to peruse this book from Genesis to Revelation, particularly in the Old Testament, we see God and God's presence or di a divine presence in humanity. That presence begins with a voice. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, Amen. And God spoke. God said, let there be. And y'all, there was. There, there were a number of things that is depicted in Genesis chapter 1 that immediately became into existence simply at the word of God. 
or the voice of God. Throughout the Old Testament, it was the word of God that showed us God's presence. Time and time again, we hear the repetitive scripture that says, and the voice of the Lord said, or the voice of the Lord came to them. It was this voice of the Lord that depicted the presence and the personality of God. But then in Genesis chapter number two, something interesting happens because God created man or humanity in his image and his likeness. I said, and God created man in or humanity in his image and his likeness. So God spoke everything else to, into existence, but when it came to humanity, God made or formed humanity in his image or his likeness. I, I would like to say that, that God formed man so that we might have a visual image of the characteristics of God. Amen. See, because when we understand it, the Bible says God is a spirit, and those that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so when God makes man with, with hands, he is depicting God's hand. Hello, somebody. When he makes man with a head and with a mind, it helps us to understand that the God that we serve is a thinking God. I wish I had some help in here. When God makes man and shapes him with legs, that tells us that the God that we serve is a God of movement and progression. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. We're able to see the attributes and the characteristics of God. God's ability to see what's going on. God's ability to hear what's going on. We already know that God has a mouth and God can speak. Hello, somebody. So when I look at the image that God has made, I have a visual manifestation of the attributes and the characteristics and the compassion at, at least the God that we serve. I haven't read these other versions of the manuscripts of other religious groups, but I have read this one. And I do ascribe to this one. That's, that's not to take away from anybody else's. You're free to believe whatever you want to. I'm just talking about what I believe. I believe that we have a God that has revealed himself unto us first in his voice and then revealing himself in his attributes in what he has and what God has created. Throughout the Old Testament, we see God's active presence, whether it is a cloud or a pillar of fire, we see God's presence throughout the Old Testament. We hear God's voice speaking unto his people. But even in all of these interactions with God, there is a disconnect between divinity and humanity that was caused by sin in Genesis chapter number 3. That the relationship or the connectivity between divinity and humanity, between God and Adam and Eve, was severed because... <clears throat> of the disobedience of humanity, or Adam. And because of Adam's disobedience or sin, it is transferred throughout humanity and throughout the Old Testament, all of the passages of the Old Testament, there was this distance, if you will, between divinity and humanity. It was almost as if God was standing off or God was a far off orchestrating the events or the affairs surrounding his creation. That God could not come close or God could not come near his creation even though he had love for it because of its sin. The closest that we see that humanity has with God is when uh, Moses is on the mountain top and Moses says unto God I want to see you and God hides Moses in the cliff or the cleft of a rock and he passed by and all that Moses could see of God is God's essence or God's glory I wish I had some help in here 
We see the destructive presence of God when the disobedient children of Israel, after forming a golden calf, after being delivered from Egypt land, they begin to worship this calf and the presence of God showed up and thunder and lightning and opened up their earth and swallowed the children, the disobedient children of Israel. The fear of the presence or closeness of God. When the children of Israel said to Moses, we're tired of listening to you, relating to us what God has to say. You go back and tell God, we want to hear from God personally. And God honors, honors their requests. And on the next day, God descends on the mountain and opens up his proverbial mouth and begins to speak. And the children of Israel could not recognize or understand or even comprehend the words of God because it sounded like thunder to them they cried out and asked God to stop speaking he said we will be obedient and we'll listen to Moses from now on but we know how long that lasted the voice of God the visualized attributes of God in humanity is not enough to draw man back to God it's not enough to reconnect humanity with divinity and so a new testament a new covenant was forged out of the love of god that while we were in this con this condition of disconnect this condition of sin the bible new testament says that while we were yet sin in sin god commended his love towards us by what sending his only begotten son jesus it's interesting when we get to this point of revelation, you have to understand in the natural realm, I choose to reveal unto you what I want to about me. Same way with you. That there's certain things that you will reveal or allow to be transparent to people who come and meet you or see you. But there's a whole lot of other stuff that you will never see or never know. I, I find it very interesting when we go to homegoing celebrations, the first thing people want to do is see the obituary. Because they want to read down the lines, and, and they read down the lines, and almost at every service I hear the same thing. I didn't know that. You've heard it. You, you've heard people, maybe you've even said it yourself, that when you read the obituary, there's something in there that you didn't know about that person. The truth of the, re re the reality is when it comes to revelation, particularly personal revelation, it is at the control of the individual to release or divulge to you things about themselves. Well, it's the same thing with God. God has not revealed everything to us about himself. Matter of fact, if the truth be told, if we knew everything about God, we wouldn't be able to handle everything about God. Matter of fact, it has been said that if every book that could have been written was written, it wouldn't, we would not be able to contain the information therein. And so God, if you will, has metered his revelation to us. God has revealed himself in what theologians call dispensations. That in these different dispensations, God has chosen or God has chosen to reveal certain aspects of himself so that we might be able to know who God is. But there's no revelation more revealing and more telling in the New Testament manifestation of God in the flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, Jesus says to his disciples when they say unto him, show us the Father, Jesus says to him, when you've seen me, you have seen the Father also. Now, beloved, as, as John which was so eloquently described to us today in our Sunday school lesson by Dr. Cornigans. John is not part of the synoptic story. 
John is a whole separate book, a whole separate rendition, uh, rendition of Jesus the Christ. It's actually from a different perspective. See, the epistles or the gospels of Jesus Christ tells us of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And yes, John tells us some of those stories as well. But John wants us to understand this human being, this person wrapped up in the same flesh like us, is actually God in the flesh. He starts off his book by not giving a whole understanding of who he is and justification of who he is and why he's writing it, but he starts off by justifying the divinity of Jesus by connecting him with Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There's no ambiguity in that statement. There's no question there about the difference between Jesus and God. John puts it in perspective that the deity of Christ is equal to that of creator God. That the presence of the word was there in the beginning in creation. And then he goes on to support his supposition by saying the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Watch this. In him was a life and the life was the light of men and the light shining in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Go back to Genesis and you will see and God said let there be light and there was light and God separated the light from the darkness. The darkness did not dispel or eliminate the light. The light was created and the darkness just moved over. I wish I had some help in here. See, the reality of truth in our life, it does not eliminate the darkness in our lives or surround us, but it gives us another perspective. That yes, in the midst of darkness, there is a light that's shining. And John says that light is the life of men. That's the same life that breathed into the nostrils of a lifeless image. And that lifeless image became a living soul. And now we know that soul to be called humanity. But God's pattern and progressive pattern of disclosure moves to its ultimate peak in the New Testament when God takes on the form of human being and Jesus comes into the world. And after John so eloquently supports his supposition of the deity of Christ, he says in verse 14, and the word became flesh or the word was made. I want you to understand, beloved, that as we sit in this season of epiphany, the season of revelation of God in each of our lives, each one of us will see God in a different space, in a different place, in the different scenarios of our lives. What I've seen about God may not be what you have seen about God. But there is some levels of commonality. There is some levels of agreement where we can touch and agree to the goodness of our God. We can agree on the fact that right early this morning, God touched us, animated our lifeless bodies, and brought us from a place of unconsciousness to a reality of consciousness. He brought us from a space of dream world into a space of reality where we could see lights and colors and we could hear sounds and we could interact one with another. We can agree on the fact that it is in God that we move and have all of our being. Regardless of what you call that God, we all recognize that it is a being or a power bigger than us that allows us to function and live in this world. We don't live and we don't move and we don't have our existence on our own. There is a power, as the kids say, somebody bigger than you and I. And God reveals himself, the, the deity of God in the person of Jesus Christ. 
And in this 14th verse, the first thing that John wants us to understand about the incarnation of God or the carnation, meaning putting the flesh on God, is that he wants us to see his humanness. Yeah. And the word was made what? Flesh. The humanness of God. Now, there's a lot of things that are associated or accompanies the humanness of God. The feeling, the compassion is all expressed in the senses that we see demonstrated in the person of Jesus Christ. We see his sensitivity. We see his compassion when he looks over Jerusalem and over the Israelites and he weeps for them. We see his compassion and his love and his identity with grief as he stands outside of the tomb of Lazarus, his friend who is dead, and cries and weeps even though in the next breath he's going to turn things around. We see the identity and the compassion of Jesus when he looks on the woman caught in the very act of adultery. And he could have joined the group of men who were pinned on killing her. But his response to her was, where is your accusers? And she says, they're gone. And he responds to her by saying, neither do I. We see the compassion of Jesus when the woman with the issue of blood who had been deemed uh, ceremoniously unclean touched him. He could have very easily had her killed. But he said unto her, your sins be forgiven. Go and sin no more. I wish I had some help. We see the compassion or, or, or the, the love and passion of Jesus exemplified in his human characteristics. He was very much a human being. We see this in the fact that he ate with his disciples. We see the fact that he was born and he was a baby and he grew up in wisdom and knowledge and also in his physical abilities. I know this might seem strange to y'all, but Jesus had to learn how to crawl. Can you imagine Jesus scooting Hello, somebody. Can you imagine Jesus as a toddler learning how to walk and falling and then pulling himself up? Jesus was a human, subject to all of the human frailties that you and I have been subject to and are subject to. None more pointed than Matthew chapter 4 when Jesus is led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus is not tempted in the spirit. Jesus is tempted in the flesh. Jesus is tempted at his weakest points. You can go through and you can look at all of the points in which Jesus was tempted. In each one of them, he did not succumb to the temptation. That's why he could pin the song. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. He did not yield in the point of his hunger after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He did not yield to the offer of position. Hello, somebody. See, all of these are the things that we look for in the flesh and that are pleasing to the flesh. And when we were tempted with these proverbial carrots dangling in front of our face, Jesus in the flesh was able to withstand them because of his internal fortitude. In other words, Jesus knew who he was. And that's a point right there for all of us, that once we understand and know who we are, we cannot be tempted with substandard carrots. Hello, somebody. When you know that you have a father that has true riches in heaven, you are not fooled by fool's gold. You're not, you're not tricked by the trinkets because you know who you are. 
See, it is in this revelation that not only do we see who God is, but we're able through Jesus to see who we are. The word became flesh. The humanness of Jesus identifies with our own humanity. And everything that we have and will go through, Jesus has already gone through it. The Hebrew writer tells us, I would not have a God that cannot be touched by our infirmities. Not only can he not be, he can be touched by our infirmities, but he has endured our infirmities and have overcome the very things that we struggle with each and every day. You don't think Jesus struggled with himself like we do? Oh, you don't have to say amen. We walk around talking to ourselves, struggling with ourselves and with decisions. Jesus did the same thing in the garden. He struggled with himself, with his flesh and his divinity, his deity. He said, Father, let this cup pass from me. Aren't you glad that there's a comma and not a period? There's a comma meaning he took a pause, but he didn't stop. He said, nevertheless, not my will, not my will of the flesh, because we already knew what his will was, that when he was lost, or at least they thought he was lost and he was in church and, and his family found him. And he says, why y'all so upset? Y'all need to know I need to be about my father's business. We already knew what Jesus' will was. He already knew what his mission was and what his purpose was. But in this moment, his flesh was crying out. His humanness was crying out. If there's another way, let's do that. He struggled with his humanity. But even with that, he was victorious. So we behold his humanness. But not only do we see the humanness in Jesus, we also see his humility. Yeah, Jesus was humble. Watch this. John says in, in another passage, he says, behold the lamb. Now when you understand the unique characteristics of a lamb, a lamb, a little sheep, uh, is very meek. Matter of fact, the prophet Isaiah really gives us this imagery about the Messiah coming as a lamb. The controversy in it that the children of Israel were not looking for a lamb. They wanted a lion. They wanted the king to come and roar. They wanted the king to come and set things in order and elevate them to position. But instead of a lion, they got a lamb. They got a meek little lamb wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a trough, a feed trough in a manger. That's not what they were looking for. They were not looking for someone to be humble. They were looking for someone to come and be bold and boisterous. Someone to come and exhibit power and authority. Power and authority that was connected with King David, the greatest king that Israel ever saw. They wanted someone to come not just dressed in purple linen and not just dressed with a crown on his head. They were looking for someone that would come with power and authority and wave a sword and kill all those that they pointed at. They wanted a ravenous king that would come and destroy everything that was not like him. And because they were chosen, they just knew that they were not going to be the ones that would be destroyed. See, we miss the humanness of Jesus. We miss this incarnation of God in our midst because in the Old Testament, the God that we saw was a far off God that was powerful, that was so powerful that they wouldn't even say his name fear that even at pronouncing his name, they would be destroyed, that they would self-destruct. But this God was so powerful and so loving that he could meter himself in a way that we could hold him, that we 
understand. And I understand and wait. And the word became flesh. And in his flesh, we could see his humanness. We could see his humility. But then lastly, we could also see his holiness. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We see his humanness because he was a little lamb. He was made in flesh like us, dwelt among us, did the things that we did, and we beheld, watch this, his glory. That even wrapped in this flesh, even subject to the very temptations of the devil, God did not lose God's divinity in the personage of Jesus because he was still holy. He was still holy because he could withstand the temptations. He was still holy because he could do what man could not do. He healed the sick, raised the dead, fed 5,000 with a few loaves and a couple of fish. Jesus was holy in how he interacted, how he talked, how he had compassion, how he was not fooled. Hello, somebody. In his holiness, Jesus understood who he was in the flesh. Not only did he understand who he was, he also understand whom he belonged to. He was the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He understood that he was the visible manifestation of the creative God himself in the midst of humanity. It was God in our midst. As proclaimed by the Matthew, uh, Matthew and the gospel writer, his name is Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus understood that for humanity, he was the visible manifestation, not of just the characteristics and the character and the attitude of God, but he was the visible presence of God in our midst. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. When I look at Jesus, I see God sitting at the table with me. When I look at Jesus, I see God laying in my bedroom. When I look at God, when I look at Jesus, I see him riding in the car with me down the street. When I see Jesus, I see God sitting in the sanctuary with us. When I see Jesus, I see the visible manifestation of God, not some distant image sitting on a cloud, but I see an ever-present help in my time of struggle and tribulation. I see a God every day revealing God's self unto me. I see a God that identifies with my pain, my sweat, my tears, my blood, my passion, my up, my downs. I see a God with me. I don't know, do I see a God with me, but I see a God dressed like me. I see a God that is dressed in the same flesh that I'm dressed in. I see a God that is able to be tempted just like me. I see ultimately my brothers and my sisters in Jesus a spiritual role model. I see a role model that helps me deal with the fiery darts that the devil will throw my way. I see a God that is able to deal with sickness and trials and tribulations and tornadoes and hurricanes and snowstorms and thunderstorms and falling trees and hell. I see a God that is able to endure the very things that we are enduring each and every day. John says, and the word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld or we were able to see. I like to expand that. I like the word behold because the word behold means that we can interact with this Jesus. The Old Testament writer says and he walks with me and he talks with me. And is there anybody in here that can say God walks with me? Or if you can't say it or, or you haven't gotten to that point, let, let me just tell you, the God that we serve is everywhere. And if he's everywhere, God is walking with you. And God knows everything and God is talking. The question is, are you listening? Or are you beholding the Lamb of God? Maybe like the children of Israel, you were looking for a lion. And so when the Lamb showed up, you dismissed. You dismissed the lamb because that's not what you were looking for. You were looking for revenge. You were looking for retaliation. You wanted God to set some folk even in the church. 
in their place. You wanted somebody, you wanted God to show up so God could say what God had to say so that you can stand up and say, I told you so. Well, beloved, we will not be in a place where we can stand up and say, I told you so. Because when God speaks, the same thing that God will speak will be judgment unto us as well. Matter of fact, the Bible says judgment is going to start right here. And so that means that the world is going to be saying, see, I told y'all those folk. Hello, somebody. They're the ones that's going to be saying, I told you so. But beloved, when we behold Jesus, we, when we behold the incarnation of God, it is the greatest picture. It is the greatest revelation of the God person in our midst. It is the most visual manifestation of deity in our midst. It is the most reverent uh, representation of God that we have and it has been reduced to black and red letters in the New Testament but it is the holy word of God and it is the way that God is revealing himself unto us and my question to you this morning is can you see him? Can you see God in your everyday life? Can you see God in the trials and tribulations in your life? I know that when we turn on the news, we hear of murder, we hear of death and destruction, but can you see God in the midst of it? Hello, somebody. I, I heard a little story last night, and it really just resonated with my spirit. Most of you understand our tradition as African Americans that on, on New Year's Day, you got to have some black eyed peas and some, some collard greens. Hello, somebody. And you, whoever walks in your house, the first thing, it has to be a male and they got to have some money in their pocket. Hello, somebody. And, and the reality of this is, it says, well, if you do these things, you won't be broke all year long. Well, let me tell y'all something, and some of y'all might be able to relate to this. I, I, listen, I've subscribed to this all my life. Hello, somebody. I had some black-eyed peas, and I had some collard greens, and I'm still out here on Long Island just trying to scrape a couple of nickels trying to make it. Hello somebody, but but here's here's the blessing in it. Uh, I'm trying to see the connection between hallelujah, the black eyed peas and, and the collard greens and, and the story on TikTok really helped me because the wife was asking the husband, look, we've been doing that all our lives and we still poor. And the husband looked at her and said, yeah, but if we hadn't have been, we'd been poor. Hello, somebody. Look at look, look at here. Maybe we don't have all that we have, but it wasn't just because of the collard greens. It wasn't because of the black eyed peas, but it was because in the midst of our struggle, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our trial, was a God that was watching over us. And if it wasn't for God, things would be a whole lot worse than they are. If it wasn't for the fact that God was in our midst, Walking and talking with us, we would have died last year. We would have lost everything last year. But because, because of his presence, Sister Jones, we, we lost a little bit, but we didn't lose it all. But Job said, even if you lose it all, if God is with you, God can give it. God can give that all back plus interest. Hello, somebody. The business world didn't come up with dividends. God came up with dividends. God said, if you trust in me, if you lean not unto your own understanding, David put it this way, he'll open up a window and pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive. I'm going to my seat, but I'm so glad, so glad that God is pouring out blessings, new mercies, and new blessings each and every day. I saw Brother Brown walking across the parking lot on his way to church and I noticed that he wasn't walking with his cane. I wish I had some help in here. The God that we serve is more, 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 more than able to do far and exceeding 
and above everything that I can think of say or do is there anybody with me is there anybody here that's glad that God is God is God is with me turn to your neighbor and say God is with me turn to another neighbor and say God is with me hallelujah God is with us beloved and yes, we're in a new year, but God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And if God kept us last year and the year before, listen, I'm looking at the numbers just like you are, and the numbers are going up. But what I like about God is God's adjustability. Yeah, I I coined a new term, God or divine adjustability. In other words, whatever level we find ourselves on, God can meet us. And God will meet us right there on that level. If you're up here, he'll meet you there. If you're right here, God will meet you right there. And if by chance you're way down here, God will meet you there. And if you don't believe me, just look at his visible manifestation. Jesus came and he was up here. He left down there. But when he came back, ah, when he came back again, he was lifted up on high. And right now he's sitting at the highest position, at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from which he succumbed to judge the quick and the dead. He's at the right hand of God. The Bible says, making intercessions for the believers. Do you believe today? Do you believe that God is with you now? Now, Kurt Franklin says, now behold the Lamb. Wherever you are now, see Jesus. See Jesus as a Savior. See Jesus as a Deliverer. And if you already know him as a Savior, if you already know him as a Deliverer, see the Lamb as a Keeper. That God can keep you right where you are. God's sustainability can help you to hold on in the midst of trials and tribulations. I don't know about you, but this week I was looking at the devastation out there in Colorado. Whole communities burned to the ground. And my heart went out, but I heard Sister Jones' the scripture. It won't be water, but fire next time. God is coming like a thief in the night, and we've got to be ready. These are just signs, y'all, of the end times. We've got to get our houses in order. We need to correct some relationships, because you don't know who's going to be standing in line with you. Or should I say, who won't be standing in line with you? Or maybe what line we're standing in? Because watch this. There's going to be one line. And when it gets up to the judgment throne of Christ, there's going to be two lines. One, come ye, blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundations of the earth. And the other line, depart from me. I never knew you. Beloved, I don't know about you, but I want to hear him say, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant. But we've got to endure some things. We've got to go through some things to be able to gain eternal life. And the key to our success down here in 2022 
is every day looking to see Jesus and beholding Jesus and holding Jesus close because I'm going to give you a breaking news report it's not getting any better it's going to get worse before it gets better because the closer we get to the end the more desperate the devil is going to become and trying to get every soul that he can get so it's going to get worse before it gets better but I need to tell you that the Jesus we serve gets better with the times hello somebody the Jesus that we serve gets better with the storm and the rain the Jesus that we serve allows us to rest and relax in the storm the Jesus that we serve gives us peace in the midst of the storm is there anybody in here know this Jesus is there anybody here this morning that says through it all I learned to trust in Jesus now behold
say that he rose again. And because he rose, we who are believers in Christ Jesus will rise again. Well, let me ask you, if you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, give him, give him a praise now. Give him a praise. intercessory prayer. God, we come before you boldly to the throne of grace. First, to recognize, Lord God, that you've been good to us and to give you thanks. And Lord God, you've been so good to us. Lord God, we look to those who cannot make it here on this day this time, this year, this first Sunday of 2022, Lord God, we thank you. And Lord, we lift up those who are in the nursing homes. We lift up those who are incarcerated. We lift up those who are on the ventilators. We lift up those who are in the hospitals. We lift up those, Lord God, who are home on the sick bed that can't get up this morning, Lord God. We lift them up to you, Lord God, to those who can't even utter a word to call upon your holy name. Oh, Lord, we lift up our emeritus deacons and deaconesses. Lord God, we lift up our jewels to you, Lord God, that you have blessed to see another year. Lord, we thank you for watching over them, keeping them, protecting them, providing for them, Lord God, yes. prospering their way to see another day and another year. Lord God, none of us would even have thought years ago that we would be standing here in the year 2022. Oh, Lord God, but you've been good. Lord God, you are good. Lord God, you will ever be good. So we lift up our brothers and sisters, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we lift them up. We pray, have your way, Lord God. Have your way with, the, with our brother Powell, who lost his brother, Lord God. Have your way with sister brothers, whose her brother has passed. Have your way, Lord God, with those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Have your way, Lord God with those who don't know which way they're going, need to be directed. Lord God, for your word can direct them. Your eye directs us, Lord God. So we lift them up. We know, Lord God, that you're interceding for us. That we can intercede for one another. Lord God, there's no other help we know. That at the name of Jesus, we know every knee shall bow in heaven and in earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So, Father, we pray. Lift up those who have bowed down heads. Open up the eyes of those who are blind as far as the faith and the word goes. Lord God, give them understanding that they will know all they have to do is call upon your holy name. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, we lift them up to you. 
as we're thanking you for lifting up our own bow down heads. All of this we pray, Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. At this time, I will give us the few announcements that we have. On tomorrow, we have the leadership meeting here in the sanctuary at 6 o'clock. Directly followed at 7 o'clock by the official board meeting. So those who need to be here, there's an important topic that we will be discussing. So if you're part of that leadership group, please come out. If you're part of the official board, please come out. All of this, we praise the name of Jesus in doing. At this time, Dr. Cornegans will come back before you. Church, what time is it? Time to give. And we put our offering in our right hand because we want to give God that which is and not that which is. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to praise you through our giving. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you allow us to give unto you. And we pray that this offering will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. Bless those that have it to give and those who may not have it today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Our Lord, be glory, majesty, power. 